Hey, what's up YouTube? Last week, I released on my Patreon a simple grass interaction system. Today, I'm releasing a more advanced one, which tries to address some of the limitations that the simpler system had, namely the interaction being limited to your own character. It also adds some very neat extra features, so let's see that in action. Here's a test scene. We have some rolling spheres, and you can see that they do indeed interact with the grass just like I'm able to with my own pawn. The interaction effect itself was improved with a much nicer and longer lasting spring effect to give the grass more weight and a more believable behavior. Also, the system now allows you to physically interact with the grass with custom effects. It's still not a perfect solution, no solution is to be honest. There's just so many ways to do this kind of effects, all with pros and cons, so this system here has still some limitations, namely it doesn't work well with a lot of interacting actors, but more on that later. For now, let's check how to use the system. First, you'll want to copy-paste that plugin folder in your project. It comes with a blueprint actor component that you will need to add to your pawn. Then in case you want other actors to interact with the grass, you will need to add a sphere volume to generate an overlap event with those nearby actors. And that sphere volume will need to have a tag to be automatically picked up by the system. And you can find that tag in the components settings here. Once you do that, you have to implement this blueprint interface on your pawn. It provides a single function used to send the system the context of a grass interaction for that actor at any given time. This will be called quite frequently, so don't do anything too crazy in it. Keep it simple, else you will likely have blueprint performance issues. Here I just check my pawn's velocity, and if it's moving enough, then I notify the system that it should interact with the grass, and send the velocity with which to do so. Radius and alpha is pretty much self-explanatory, how large and how strong the interaction is. Now, because all effects are baked into 2D render targets, the system essentially works in 2D space using X and Y location and X and Y velocity. It has no knowledge of where the interaction is in this space, so you kinda have to trick it. Here I use a chip line trace to detect how far off the ground my pawn actor is to drive the alpha value so that when I'm in the air, I'm no longer interacting with the grass beneath me. And that's one of the limitations of the system, but it's one you can quite easily bypass using that kind of setup. Alright, moving on. For other actors, it's even simpler. Let me open that ball blueprint. It doesn't need any component. Obviously, this actor needs to generate an overlap event in case it does indeed overlap with our sphere volume we added to our pawn. So it needs to be configured to do that, right? But besides that, all you need to do is implement that blueprint interface again and use that same function. Once you do that, you're pretty much set when it comes to blueprint. At this point, you should see yourself and nearby actors leaving a trail of random colors in those two render targets. Both are super low resolution to be as performant as possible, and that's one of the limitations of the system as well. Unless you increase this render target size and pay the additional GPU cost, you won't be able to have super tiny interaction radius. And so if you're looking for super realistic interaction effects, like maybe have each foot of your character individually interact with the grass, or something very precise like that, this approach may not work that well for you. Anyway, in the first render target, the red and green channels are X and Y interaction velocities, and in the blue channel, an interaction mask to be used however you want. Like here, for instance, I'm using that blue channel to drive the emissive value of my grass material. In the second render target, there's only red and green channels for X and Y interaction delayed velocities. And that's how the bending effect is done. You see, my grass material samples the base X and Y velocity render target at the roots and the delayed velocity at the tips to compute the rotation axis and angle and give the grass that springy effect. It may sound fancy, but there's a material function provided by the system to precisely do that. Once again, grass pivots should be baked into UVs in order for this to work, although if you can't or don't want to, 
just like with my simple graph interaction system, I've provided a simplified version of this material function meant to work without pivots, so no rotation, only translation, and it obviously doesn't look as good. But anyway, with pivots, it's pretty straightforward. Use that function, plug that in your world position offset, and you're pretty much good to go. The grass will react to your movements and the movement of nearby actors with some really nice motion. I think it looks great. We can also spawn effects, like I mentioned before. For instance, on the left click, I can interact with the grass in front of me. That's really straightforward to do, as you can see here. Left click, call that components function, and that's it. Down below on right click, I just spawn my grenade blueprint, and if I check what's in it, you can see that it's very simple as well. Upon it, I get the player's character, get its grass interaction component, and call that function, and voila, that's pretty much it. So, to sum up very briefly, in your pawn, add that component, create a sphere volume, configure it so that it generates overlap events with nearby actors, set its tag, implement the blueprint interface, and override that function to customize how and when your pawn should interact with the grass. For other actors, just implement the interface and use that function to do the same thing. Then in your grass material, sample the under targets using the material function provided or using your own logic to rotate the grass around their pivot points and boom, done. Now let me say a few words about the settings available in that blueprint component. First, you have a boolean to skip drawing the interaction delayed velocities onto the second render target. As stated in the tooltip, if false, then it should be false in your grass material as well, in case you do use the function provided, to stop sampling that render target and only rely on the first one. This obviously will be a slight performance boost, although it's nothing crazy, more on performance later. See here an example using the delay pass, and notice the grass bending nicely, and here's without. It doesn't look bad, but you can see the grass blades remaining straight as they bend, so yeah, it's up to you. If you think the visual improvement is worth the very slight GPU cost, then go for it. Then we have that tag needed for the sphere volume on our pawn. You may change it for whatever reason, obviously it will need to be changed in that sphere volume as well, so they both match. The capture size dictates how far we'll be able to see the interaction effects, and that's in centimeters, and that will likely depend on the view distance of your game and things like that. Now, because the render targets are only 128 pixels squared, it's unlikely you will be able to cover a huge area unless you use interaction effects with larger radius, because at one point they may end up being rendered so small that they'll have size smaller than a pixel, and at this point it kinda breaks down. So don't go too crazy with this, or increase the render target size, and make sure the increased GPU cost fits into your budget. Actor trail rate is the rate at which trail particles are spawned per second per actor, knowing that the system has a pool of 48 particles dedicated to nearby actors. And that's the thing I mentioned earlier, and I'm not going to lie, this system is not great if you plan to have dozens of actors all interacting with the grass at the same time. Because depending on how long that interaction lasts, the system will reach its limit of 48 active particles, and at this point the actors will no longer interact with the grass as long as there's no available particle. And I will be able to demonstrate that in a minute. But if you know the scope of your project, and know that the amount of interacting actors will be kinda limited, to a few maybe, then it could definitely be a solution for you. Again, there's just so many ways to make a grass interaction system and there's other techniques that would be able to remove that limitation. One would be to spawn a particle system for each actor, leaving a trail of particles behind them that would be captured by a scene capture, but it's slightly more complicated and scene captures are quite costly, so I'm pretty sure it'd be less performant. It's all pros and cons as always. Anyway, moving on, then we have settings to control how long each particle will live. The longer they do, the less frequent we'll be able to spawn them. Because again, for all of these, the system have a fixed amount of available particles to render. So we may reach a point where they all are active if they do stay alive for too long. 
and the last setting is the debug view which I'm going to use now to give a bit more technical details about how the system works. So with this debug view we can see the interaction radius, the interaction velocity using those purple lines and the particle index. The system has a pool of 20 particles for the player trade. This is done using a timer, which tick rate is set based on how many particles there is in that pool and the particle's lifetime. Here it will tick every 0.2 seconds. The function is very straightforward. Get the owner, call that interface function to get the interaction context and spawn a trade effect. There we find the first available particle index, if any, and update the material instance that we will use to draw onto under targets the timestamp, radius, xy location, and xy velocity, and that's it. The rest is done in the material. We draw a sphere mask around that xy location, multiply the given xy velocity with an oscillating curve sampled using the timestamp sent to the material, the current time, and the expected particle's lifetime to compute a normalized time. And that 20 times. It may sound crazy, but it's actually not that bad. 300 or so pixel instructions rendered onto a 128 pixel square render target is actually quite fast. And it's a good time to talk about performance. First, my specs are 970 GTX and a first gen Threadripper, so definitely nothing crazy for gaming. The render target GPU cost is about 0.2 milliseconds for the first pass and 0.1 milliseconds for the delayed pass, so it's decent, I think. And the cost for the grass material is tiny because it's really just sampling one or two render targets. It all depends on how you use those render targets, right? So I consider the GPU cost very, very decent. The blueprint cost is also not that bad. It does a few things on tick, namely drawing the render targets and updating a few parameters in a material collection, but that's it. There's two timers that ticks at a low frame rate to add those trail particles, but that doesn't cost much CPU either. So honestly, overall, I'm pretty happy with the performance of this system, but that's due to the limitations I chose to have, right? Like the limited support for nearby actors. And why is that? Well, if we take a look at the material used to draw the actor's interaction, it's the exact same setup, just that it has more available particles, and that start to add up, right? 700 or so instructions again sounds crazy but it's not that bad at all to draw on a very small render target so actually you could very well add more and more to potentially do a greater job at supporting multiple actors it's up to you so what happens when you have too many actors or that you have a few but that they spawn too many particles Let's see, see the red particles here? That's particles that had to be skipped because all 48 particles available were still alive at the time. They are spawned at a higher rate than they die, so the system eventually runs out of available particles to use. Hopefully I'm not rambling too much and that all makes sense and you can have a grasp on the limitation of the system and its purpose. I'm almost done, let me finish with the debug view for effects. It's interesting because it will actually help me demonstrate what some of the parameters are on that function used to create an effect. So that first boolean is a way to tell the system which pool of particles to use. The player has its own and the actors has their own. For each, there's 10 particles available because they are way more complex to render, as you can see. So the pixel instruction rise way more quickly than with simpler trail particles. Then the location of the effect. Note that the Z component is only used for the debug view. The system only really cares about X and Y. Force and radius are two obvious settings, right? Now let's specify a direction, like our forward vector, and then tell the system how much of that direction to use. If one, the effect will be fully directional, so gross all around the given location will bend towards that direction. Zero means it's going to be a radial effect around the given location, like we were able to see with those grenades. We can also mask the effect, meaning use the given direction to create a sort of cone and make the grass behind us not affected as much. And we can tighten that directional falloff. So the direction can be used for two things, right? 
one is to drive the effect direction itself and or mask the effect in the given direction. Voila, I think I covered pretty much everything there is to know about the system. Hopefully I gave enough technical details in case you want to get started with your own system using a similar approach, but I didn't want to show everything either because else, well, there's no point in buying it or supporting my patron to get access to it, right? I have to find a balance and it's not always easy. So yeah, it's available on Gumroad and on my Patreon as a tier 3 reward. Speaking of Patreon, I received a ton of support lately, there's quite a few new people on board, so I cannot thank you enough for the support. I used to do a personal shoutout to each and every one of you, but I fear that may quickly have reached its limit. A few people have signed in with names spelled with Asian characters, and so yeah, I can't read that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just know that I feel humbled and grateful for your support, so thank you. It's only the beginning, so stay tuned for what's coming up next. Consider leaving a like if you liked the video and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks for your time, I'll see you in the next video, bye bye!